Alright, chapter 5 has officially dropped and we're gonna get into it. This chapter's cover page is of Sasuke Uchiha. And just like the previous chapters, I'll be rating this cover page as well. I'll give the cover page a solid 7. And it's purely 7 based on his pose. Cause to me, his pose is like very static. It lacks dynamism. Like it doesn't look lively is what I'm trying to say. It was alright. I'm still gonna give, give it a 7 cause you know, it's Sasuke and all. We haven't seen Sasuke in a while as a cover page but yeah. But that's it for the cover page man. Let me know your thoughts regarding it okay the chapter starts off with a flashback bringing us back to two years prior a year after sasuke and borto left the village we see that borto has let go of his hair and he looks tough as hell man like he gives off a different vibe and frankly i wouldn't mind if borto kept growing his hair out bro <laughs> that would look so sick because he can rock it man we also see sasuke who hasn't changed a lot or at all and he looks similar to how he was pre time skip but yeah they are apparently training kenjutsu in a designated area within a forest apparently Apparently Borto has already mastered almost all of Sasuke's techniques and styles all within a year of training with him. I like all of this within a year bro that's crazy. And <laughs> Bro, this is a mission by Sasuke himself. Boruto thinks he's joking, but Sasuke reassures him that he's not, bro. He's not joking around. Sasuke looks serious as hell, and it seems like Sasuke has had a rough out there, man. He's struggling with the omnipotence and the evidences he's like constantly being faced with that contradicts his memories, like with Momoshiki and like everything else. Sasuke does tell Boruto that he is a genius. He has it all in his mind, and it's all dependent on Boruto himself to master what he has been taught. And Sasuke informs Boruto that he looks a lot like Naruto, and he understands understands why Sarada urged him to save Boruto as Sasuke emphasizes that there is something that only Boruto and Sarada can solve. So his memory of Boruto and Boruto's identity does not matter. This conversation takes place as they navigate through trees seemingly heading to certain somewhere. The chapter skips over their encounter with Code and how Sasuke as it states manages to take out Code's left eye. We still see that Code is like bleeding from his left eye but we don't see how it happened. And the narrative jumps straight into the midst of the battle where all of them appear to be battle damaged and worn out. And Sasuke takes charge and confronts Boruto telling him to leave. Boruto is being reluctant of course and Sasuke the goat himself gives him the stray facts man he basically tells him that they aren't capable of defeating code at this point and sasuke insists that borto must leave and master the skills he has taught him and then only then will borto become unstoppable he lastly ensures sarada to borto as his dying wish and goes face to face against code bro that's so wild i'm not gonna lie man in my chapter 4 reaction which i couldn't release by the way i did discuss the possibilities and what would be a fitting exit for you know sasuke and oh my god they nailed it man by the way i do believe both naruto and sasuke are gonna return to the story later on but yeah man that's another topic but man i to be honest i did not expect all of this like i mean sasuke protecting boruto like by facing cold head on also interesting sarda to boruto man that is very badass that's a good way to go out man and it also doesn't tarnish his name as many people thought but please make it make sense man like how did code win the fight and still took the l here like, it doesn't make sense bro how, he's supposed to be much stronger than jigen at this point and he still manages to get bodied by a nerfed sasuke bro that is embarrassing and we know that boruto he definitely left the fight as code taunts him for it like during the time skip so we know that happened but yeah man this man code cannot take a dub at all he's a walking l but yeah we see that after some time Borto returns to the battleground we see a big tree surrounded by clawgram corpses cut in half and missing tails bro like sasuke was not playing around and yeah of course that tree is obviously the you know infamous tree that sasuke forms into Borto, he walks up to sasuke he removes the sword from sasuke's hand and he calmly says oh leave this to me master before sheathing his blade bro man that scene is so underrated man i love this so much it's hella cold from Boruto, like, that, shit, that shit was fire, I'm not gonna lie. The next page showcases him in the same pose two years later, with, of course with the shorter hair, like his current look. And if I'm not mistaken, that same page is supposed to be him returning to Kronoha. Like, so in this picture, he's actually in Konoha. Yeah, man, I love this scene, man. I like the little, you know, the shading, the, the pose itself was nice. And like how Boruto's cloak, it was fluttering against the wind, as well as the, the background, man. Yeah, this shot was like fire, bro. Returning to Konoha, we see that Konohamaru is running somewhere. And long and behold, we actually find out that the Harley Quinn looking girl was Moegi all along, as we all predicted, of course. It appears she has also been eaten by a clawgram and the uh, team 10 is gathered around her as she is their captain and they see they are determined to find a way to serve her. Of course that's also like a hint to you know involve team 10 in the plot as well. 
Yeah, so the scene then transitions to Moegi's Shinzo form. Her name is revealed to be Masuri. It's revealed that each of them, whilst being a single existing Shinju, they are also forming a distinct consciousness. And with that, they have a heightened sensitivity and awareness, enabling them to sense the emotional consciousness of their previous hosts. Bro, like, okay, so for example, in Masuri's case, she can sense Konohamaru, as well as Inoshikachu, like Team 10, who were at that point surrounding her. Uh, she says that she could feel their anger and rage, which like makes me wonder whether she could actually feel their emotions, or was it only because they were in her surroundings and she could therefore feel their emotions. We also get to know that Sasuke Shinju form is called Hidari, and the main guy, aka Alfredo, is actually called Jura. Yeah, that's his name, apparently. So in line with the chapter's title, targets each shinju decides to have a target based on their instinctual desire or as it appears who their host had a strong connection with so we have jura jura's choice is to target naruto and that confuses the group as naruto for what we know he is of no significance and he is not an osusuki either for him to trigger the divine tree so it was weird why he picked him but later on jura clarifies that they are already a divine tree and they will eventually devour both and kawaki as their last goal so the final goal hasn't changed but he says that since they have evolved into having their distinct consciousness they should for some reason give into it yeah that was kind of weird but uh, it appears that they will have a momentary direction to form their identity somehow yeah meanwhile Matsuri she selects Konohamaru as her target and Hidari Sasuke's Shinju form he chooses Sarada and that shot was so fire but I'm not gonna lie that shot is like called herself from him but while all this is happening Ada is using her Senrigan to listen in on them uh, surprisingly Bug notices it he walks up to her and straight looks at her and says oh you are my target Man, that scene was so cold, bro. Nah, it was a little terrifying. Now, before we move on, I just want to say that many people assume that love is actually the main factor for their decisions. I personally would disagree on that, but I do agree that for the most part, these Shinjus are picking the targets based on who the hosts were emotionally connected with, which tends to be love. However, we still don't know why Jura decided to pick Naruto, and in my opinion, it's highly unlikely to be bound of love or admiration. But yeah, man, we transition to Amado's lab, and this is the first time we ever hear from and see Amado since the time skip. Amado reveals that he has essentially figured out that Kawaki is the one marked with Akebi, i.e. her daughter's karma. The conclusion stems from him noticing his marks on Kawaki's body. Basically, how he modified his body is almost like he has his signature on it leading him to come to the only possibility that someone must have altered his memory at some point such as Kawaki's modified body and his karma contradicts his memory and he has deduced that Kawaki must be the only one with Akibi's karma yeah man this guy is hella smart by the way it would make sense for Amado to know whose job it was since he was the one who also modified Ada you know and while all this is happening by the way Sai and Shikamaru are observing it they see what's happening Sai asks Shikamaru what he thinks about it and all we see is him looking back with a lot of thought in a bubble i guess it insinuates that he probably knows he messed up now but yeah man i do think that the only way to resist ada's omnipotence is to doubt and resist your own memory in the presence of a clear proof the next page features sumire and sarada sumire is discussing what she just witnessed with amado and his resistance to the omnipotence and sarada is confused as she refers to how despite showing an existing photo and proof of naruto's family with borto in it people still remained in denial or rather that they actually were convinced that Boruto in that picture was actually Kawaki but she also does recognize that her dad also went against his own memories and beliefs to protect Boruto now to be honest Amadou is a whole scientist so it makes sense that he would rely on his science and his signature as it stares directly at him it's very hard to deny in that case a downside to photographic evidence is that it could be subject to manipulation and if that was the reason to doubt their memory that would make sense you know but to deliberately say that that picture of Boruto is Kawaki that is quite obscure since they did see Boruto i.e. Kawaki when he arrived to the village with T10 and Konohamaru as that is also a recent memory so it might be that either Amado has been aware of the omnipotence since day one and unaffected by it or he is actually just stating the truth that he has just casted away his memory which by the way Sasuke also did when he saw Sarada awaken the Mangekyo it wasn't a very simple action but I mean Sasuke was still in doubt till the very end whereas Amado has actually figured it out so at first it was like whenever they started doubting their memory and questioning it 
they were inflicted by a huge amount of headache and pain so i don't know how amado could have escaped that and i don't know if that would be consistently happening or only when ada was around or present all right returning to the chapter itself we suddenly see Boruto appear behind them so casually. He says that Sasuke believed in him and sacrificed himself for him while still doubting his memory all because of Sarada. And there man we have an emotional reunion of Boruto and Sarada. It has like so many different angles and uh, yeah man it was a very good reunion in my opinion like it was emotional and uh, this is for the second time by the way and yeah man he finally returned to Konoha. Meanwhile we also have two separate scenes depicting Sumire and she's just watching them hug it out. I I just gotta say man I pity the summary shippers it doesn't look good for y'all that ship might be sinking soon man there was a lot happening in this chapter and I mean a lot of build ups I mean the Shinjuku the reveal of Amado that he pretty much figured it all out and uh, we also have Shikamaru and I guess his decision will play a big role from now on knowing the truth and uh, we also have Borto's return to Konoha which is it's probably gonna get noticed by Kawaki man I feel like Kawaki and even probably Mitsuki is gonna notice it and man I cannot wait for a fight between Mitsuki and Boruto I know it's gonna be hit and man we also have the Shinjus and their targets safe to say it's gonna be a lot to unload for the next chapter man uh, I know it's gonna be peak for sure bye man I'm gonna now rate the chapter itself and uh, I'll probably give it a solid 9 bro although it was like pretty much all dialogues I still love it man cause I mean it really raised the stacks and now it feels like anyone can get it but yeah anyways man thank you all for listening I'm gonna head out peace